The Gili Islands. We just spent the last three days traveling these beautiful islands, but we're choosing to never travel the Gili Islands again, and here's why. <laughs> That's how I feel. If you've ever traveled to the Gili Islands, well, a lot has changed, and not all of those changes are positive. This has been so far a real inconvenience coming to Gili. Uh, the hotel that we booked was supposed to get a double room but the one they checked us into was a twin and it does not look anything like in the photos pretty much to, to say the least. Most of you will be traveling from Bali either from Sonor or Patan by Port. We went from Patan by Port but no matter where you're traveling from you now have to pay a tourist tax to leave the island of Bali. And then you buy the ticket. Uh... Each person leaving Bali by boat is now taxed 10k per person and that doesn't matter if you're a foreigner or a local. Now, if you're parking your bike at the port, there are many locals offering to park your bike at their home, but make sure you ask how much it costs to pay per day before you park there. We didn't really look for the best price around, but we paid about 20k per day for our motorbike to leave it at Patton by Port. Now, you can get your tickets at the harbor, but I highly recommend you guys book your tickets in advance, either through some of the agents on the streets of Bali, but the route that we chose to go through, which was booking it through one of the websites called GaleyTransfers.com. We use this website to book all of our tickets in advance. The prices were great compared to the agents and other websites. However, I don't recommend you booking your tickets all at once, which is what we did because we're traveling all of the islands around Lombok and Bali. Sometimes your boat might get canceled and then of course you miss your transfer for the days following. So far, we're traveling during dry season, so we really don't have any issues of boat cancellations. We have missed the Gili Transfers boat from Limbong and back to Bali. Uh, originally, I thought that we had no issues, but it seems that Gili Transfers isn't always up to date with the schedules. They issued us the wrong departure time on our ticket one hour later than it was supposed to be, unfortunately. So we were an hour late, but uh, we're trying to find another ferry back to Bali now. <laughs> hey, can I say be cool? Price your price. Really? Because your bullet 115 for me 75. Well, at least we learned a valuable lesson from this trip. Double check the departure times at the ticket office. But uh, overall, it's a good thing that we got it cheaper. Uh, turns out that we got a better rate here at the port than we did online. Now, what can you expect traveling on the speedboats from Bali to Gili and vice versa? Well, be ready for an overcrowded ferry transfer. Uh, these companies overbook and oversell the tickets, so sometimes you won't even get onto the boat if you're late. So make sure you get there early and you're first in line to get on the boat because the seats are first come, first serve. When we arrived to the boat from Bali to Gili, uh, we got on there pretty late and there was absolutely zero seats in the cabin. Uh, people had to sit back at the back of the boat where the engines were. Some people had to get onto the roof of the boat, which is very unsafe. It's where all the luggage was stored. Um, so you can imagine this can get pretty hectic and get people's emotions pretty high. <laughs> So to summarize it all up, it was just pure chaos getting onto the boat transferring from Bali to Gili. Now, if you don't bring any drinks like water or sodas on board, buying drinks on the ferry can be expensive and deceptive. I asked for a beer on the boat, which was 20K per beer, which I thought was actually very low considering that in Bali, you go to a restaurant and you pay 25, 30K for a beer. And then I gave him 100K and he decided to give me only 50K back. He's like, oh yeah, it's only 50k, not 20k. You you misheard me. So that's a common thing is mishearing, misunderstanding the price. Uh, so make sure you double check the price before you buy the beer or the drink, whatever it may be. Now previously when you would arrive at your destination like Gili or the Noosa Islands, there would be some people on the beach actually waiting to take your luggage. There will be locals actually waiting to take some of your luggage off the boat and help you carry them and transfer them to your motorbike or your taxi, whatever it may be. And you're welcome to do this, but remember that nothing is free. So these locals are expecting you to tip them for carrying your luggage, maybe about 10 or 20K. When you finally arrive in the Gili Islands, there is now a tourist tax. Yes, that's right. You have to pay a tax to leave Bali and to arrive in the Gilis. And now you also have to pay for a tax for leaving the Gili Islands. 
So you have to pay to leave Bali, to enter Gili, and to leave Gili. It's, it's just absolutely crazy to me. The tax is different depending on what island you're going to, whether it's Gili T, Gili Meno, or Gili Air. Uh, I'll put all the costs on the screen of how much it'll cost to enter the different islands. For us, the tourist tax to enter Gili T was 10k for foreigners and 3k for locals. Now, as a result of this tourist tax, this has created some massive lines when you're arriving in the Gili Islands. Like, just absolutely insane. I've never seen anything like this before. I don't know if we're gonna make this I have no idea. 30 minutes and it's only 50 meters away from the... Yeah, this line Not even 50. Many. The line is just absolutely insane and the tax doesn't help on the way in and on the way out. It is because the port is just so small and then there's so many people coming in. It's just the port cannot maximize the, the volume yeah, the volume of people, people coming in and out. So overall, this was just a completely negative experience arriving in the Gili Islands for many people. But once you've gone through all of the chaos and, and the paying of the taxes, the first thing you might notice if this is your first time is that there is, of course, no motor bikes, no vehicles. The only thing that's on the island is bicycles, electric scooters now, which is great, and of course, the controversial horse carriages. Do you take a horse carriage or do you walk the one kilometer, the two kilometers to your hotel room. Once you've arrived at your hotel though and unloaded all of your stuff, you can book a bicycle for about 50k per day, which is what we decided to do. About to rent a bike here from our hotel. If you've been to Gilly Islands before, you might know that this island does not have any scooters. So you have to get around by either walking, which takes about an hour to walk around the whole island, or you take a, uh, a bicycle like everybody else here. Just remember though that there can be theft and you need to lock your bike when you park at restaurants or in front of your hotel. Now, of course, this may be obvious, but choose your hotel that's close to the port. That way you don't have the headache of carrying your luggage. And of course, if you're walking with your luggage, choose carefully what you're bringing to the island. We saw many people walking on the island with roller bags. And it's very inconvenient as the roads in the Gillies are all broken, they're not paved, and some of them are just straight out sandy dirt roads. Eventually walking and carrying your luggage on these roads, you're going to break the wheels on your bag if you have a wheeler. One of the things that we ended up doing was going to a convenience store to get snacks and drinks. Baby, welcome to McDonald's. When paying for anything at these convenience stores though on the island, expect to pay about a 25 to 50% surcharge on the prices. One thing you guys must know about uh, convenience stores in Gili Islands is that there is not a single price listed here. Not a single one, except for the coffee, which is 5K. Everything else you, it's like a surprise. When you get to the cash register, it's just like, Oh, this is how much it costs. Like, usually these are 10K. Here, they'll probably be about 15 to 20K. This is usually like 8K, I think. And this will be probably like 14, maybe 15. If you are planning to go out to the bars in the Gillies, which of course many of us do, there will be happy hour promotions to attract customers to come to the bars. What we were seeing was basically about 50K to 60K for cocktails during happy hour. Outside those hours, you can expect to pay about 100K for a cocktail, which is roughly about honestly the same price as Bali, really. However, one thing we noticed is that when we were ordering cocktails, they never came out exactly as you would expect. Uh, the drinks just are not going to be up to your expectations. Just know that up front. Uh, so the safe bet, of course, as always, just order a beer. One thing we were noticing as well when we were eating out at the restaurants and cafes is that there will often be a tax and service fee, which is now pretty common in Bali. Expect there to be about a 15 to 21 percent tax and service fee. Um, you just have to read at the bottom of the menu to see if the menu prices actually include the tax and service or if they exclude the tax and service. And that'll give you an idea of the menu prices at the restaurants if they're actually higher than what you're going to pay or if it's everything's included in the price already. Finally, once you're ready to leave Gilly Islands, make sure you get to the port early. If you plan to take a horse carriage, just remember that everyone on the island is checking out at the same time. So there will be a shortage of horse carriages transferring from hotel to the pier, uh, which means that you may need to be walking to the pier. So what I recommend you do is get there about one and a half hours early to the pier. You will need to check into your boat's head office building and collect your lanyard and your tickets. You also need to pay for the tax when you're leaving Gilly. So when you arrive to the pier at Gilly T, 
There is a huge building in the middle of the pier on the left side. That's where the tourist tax office is. That's where you pay the tax to leave the island. So you pay the tax? Yeah, so... So when you enter Yili, international tourists and local tourists have different price. But when you get out from this island, both has the same price, which is 10 page. Really? Makes no sense. I have no idea. This is yours? This is mine. I, I don't understand why it's different entering or why it's different leaving, but roughly we spent about 30, 33k just in taxes for Gili tea. So that's overall what our experience was like traveling through the Gili Islands. Overall, it's a great travel destination if this is your first time in the Gili's. Uh, if you're looking for beautiful beaches and great bars, great nightlife, that's the place to go. However, because of the absolute chaos of getting there and being taxed at every single island, I'm going to be avoiding them. If there's anything that I miss, comment them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. And I'll see you guys in the next video, which is going to be in the Noosa Islands. So there is another activity you can do while you're waiting for your boat, including that. It's so beautiful, the sky. Look, look, shut up.